From having a child at the age of 19 to undergoing 14 heartbreaks and 15 abortions before she got married, rising above all of this to writing books, you know, books on how to, what is wrong with my taste in men for single ladies and how the matchmaker's marriage failed, Lara Kudaisi has risen through all of this and has decided to not only share her experience but help people who are dealing with hurt, pain and heartbreak. She's here today to talk to us about emotional healing. Thank you for joining us, Lara. Welcome, Lara. For having me. Thank the first you. thing I thought of when I saw having a child at 19, undergoing 14 heartbreaks, undergoing 15 abortions before you got married was, how were you counting? <laughs> I wasn't counting at the time. It was after, I think, when I wanted to get married or maybe, I think the last person broke my heart and I sat down, you know, you know when you have this epiphany, introspectiveness, you know, I sat down, started writing names and all of that. And I'm like, hey, you see my life, 14 people, you know, so that's how it was. It wasn't like I was counting when it was happening. Okay, so when you decided to come out with it, yeah. I know a lot of people would have said, are you kidding me, talking about abortion so openly. Yes. What, what the response you got, what was it like? At first it was, uh, you know, this is Nigeria. People don't like, we are conservatives. People don't like you when you talk about stuff like that, even though we engage in it, but we like to, you know, put it underneath. Mm. At first it was like, what are you saying? What are you saying? But eventually people who have been through what I've been through, and that's the reason why I put out those gory details. Is very deliberate so that people who have been there would know that you're not alone somebody who has had it worse somebody who has had it you know um, like you is here and she's doing well and better you mm -hmm. know so and that's it and healing is my very very like that's really what I want to help people undergo because that was what happened to me I was very dysfunctional you know from my childhood dysfunction I had a lot of issues my dad when I had my child at 19 he would talk down at me look at you who would marry you blah 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 and I, I, I wanted to prove my dad wrong, you know, that I would get married, I would be somebody, I will show this man. That's what all of us do. But that's the greatest mistake I did because I now had a wrong motivation, which is to prove my dad wrong. In my book, I wrote it there. <laughs> there was this chapter that said, I married to prove daddy wrong because I just closed my eye to all the red flags, all the warning signs because the goal was get married, get married, get married. Hence the 14 heartbreaks. Because when somebody breaks up with you, instead of you to sit down, you know, you're supposed to sit down, you're supposed to heal. Because it's not easy, you, you mix with somebody mm. and then, some, you know, you guys are one already or stuff like that. And then the person, like, cuts you off and goes away. It's like they're taking a part of you away. You're supposed to sit down, mourn it, grieve it, you know. It's okay to hurt, you know, and then heal. So that you won't transfer all of that into the next relationship because people become bitter people become you know uh, pain people become you know you just you just start looking at everybody as karma mm, you know this one mm, you know femis ah edgy rose you know this is how they do and it's because of all your pain you know that you're supposed to heal from but you 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 know nigerians now why are you crying it is lost what's that go away you don't, don't cry my friend let's go to the club it's a lie Hard guy, hard guy, one day you go crash. Hmm. So we find you. that, unfortunately, <laughs> wow. people, we're, we're a society that teaches people to suppress their emotions, exactly. not to express it, don't deal yeah. with it, you know, cry but don't cry for too long. If yeah. I don't cry at all, just yes. move over yes. it. At the point where you were dealing with your pain, what were some of the, the things that, now given the benefit of hindsight, what are some of the things that you wish you knew better or what are some of the things that you wish people did differently to you? At the time okay for instance it started from when i got pregnant and had my you know daughter people don't know your story when you're pregnant you know outside wedlock they just feel ah this one ah you know she's a prostitute she's a, you know you don't know that and you know the funniest thing was that it was the first time i had intercourse <laughs> that i got pregnant and i was five months and two weeks gone so i had no idea so if i had known believe you me i would have removed it because i was still in school I was still a child at that time. I was 19. You know, so I expected people to um, um, be sensitive, you know, but people weren't, you know. I went back to school with my pregnancy, by the way. I was everywhere. I was a PR of my department. I was a choir coordinator. I was, but I just had, I don't even know where it came from. I just told myself, I'm not going to be another statistics of people who had a child and then their life is finished. You know, so I wish that people were more sensitive. And then when I was going through my heartbreaks, I wish people would let me cry. Is therapeutic let me be human don't say don't cry what is that don't say that they are human let him expel it because if you don't expel your emotions there's a way your body will expel it for you because if you don't expel it through tears by sharing or in therapy 
there is a way your body would expel it for you. And some people, is in migraine. You'll be having constant migraine. You don't even know where it's coming from. You'll be going to the hospital all the time. Some people is ulcer. Some people is stomach ache. Some people is back ache. Because... Maybe that's why ulcer is disturbing you. <laughs> because you're suppressing a whole lot of emotions. You're like, no, no, it's not. And you know Nigeria, we like to live in denial. No, it's not my portion. No. Ah, sadness. No. Until people... Look at it now. People are committing suicide now. The suicide rate in Nigeria is going high. That's why. Because they've suppressed it for a very long while. And then someday, you know, it's like you're covering something, covering some... I saw one analogy somewhere. Beach balls. You know, you're trying to put them under a pool or under the beach. You're trying to... One day, you know, the thing will erupt. You know, so that's why some people are married. And their husband will just step on them. And she will just slap the husband. And, you know, when, by the time she's telling people, they'll say, what did we carry? What are you doing? It is because of past hurt, past pain, past rape, past heartbreak, past, you know, uh, um, abuse, past molestation, past abandonment, you okay. know, so that's, that's just it. So as a, an emotional healing guru that you are, yeah. would you lead us kindly through the steps that one needs to go through? Because there's an, uh, there's an assumption that I once heard a phrase that the first, best way to get over someone is get with another person, oh my which God. is what a lot of people do. The moment they're out of a relationship that didn't work, they're going on dates looking for someone to fill in that void. So what would you say are some of the tips you'd give to people dealing with, let's start with heartbreak. Okay. In one of my programs, you know, I, I call it the nine stages of healing. You know, and number one is to grieve, like I said. Grieve. Don't, don't, tell, don't let them tell you, let's go to the club. You, mm -mm. Grieve. You know, you just lost something. It's like you lost your husband, you lost your wife, whatever. Take time out and grieve. Don't stay too long, child, but just grieve. You know, after that, you need to detach. You know, detach from that person or that thing that is holding you down. You know, some people, are, they've broken up with their ex. They're still texting every day. They're still checking their, me, I'm a stalker of life. When they break up with me like this, they will block me. I'm going to use another account. You're just hurting yourself. You understand? So you need to detach. You need to detach. And then there's another thing called acceptance. Acceptance means it has happened. He has broken up with me. She has told me I'm not good enough. She has said this. It's okay. It's done. Because we don't do that. You know, we're like... <laughs> I once had a relationship where the guy had broken up with me, let's say in November, but me, I've not broken up with him as a July next year. <laughs> you know, we do that because I, we're st he's still somewhere here. You know, you still imagine it. You dream about it. I'm telling you, you, you can, you know, the, the uh, uh, subconscious is that powerful. You, you see your future with him and he's gone. So you need to accept it. You need to accept it. And then, you know, there's a closure part. You need to get closure. When I say get closure, somebody will now use the excuse of, I want to go and see him. Mm -mm. You don't have to see them before you get closure. There's a way. Don't worry. When you reach me, I can't even begin to explain all of that. And then there's another thing called rediscovery. You need to start rediscovering yourself. Most of the time, when pain happens, when pain comes into our lives, you know, we, are, we, we will lose who we are. You know, when you were in a relationship, maybe you've lost yourself, you've forgotten who you are, you know, you were just all about, I want to get married, I want to get married. So now is the time to rediscover yourself. What are those things that you really like? You need to go on that journey all over again. Because like, I, like somebody <laughs> that I really respect once told me, when you go through pain, you need to learn from it. Don't waste your pain. Because that's what I did with mine now. I had all of this experience and I birthed, you know, my books or books. I birthed healing boot camp. I birthed so many things. So don't waste your pain. What are you missing from that pain? You need to check it. What are you learning from that pain? What are you birthing? And then who are you becoming? Because people become bitter. People become scammers. People become whatever. So you need to become the right. You need to check who am I becoming? Who do I... So, Rediscovery, go on a read. Some people I suggest, I say, travel. Go on a journey. Do new things. You know, try to, con you know, uh, um, um, what do they call that thing? Uh, 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 what, they, what, what they say, you connect with your inner child. You know, maybe your childhood dreams, bring it out again. Bring it, everything out. Bring it all out. And then, you know, there's, there's another thing I call modeling. Modeling means you have some people that you want to model your life after. <clears throat> You understand if it's a, an opera, if it's whoever you like, you understand. You, so you begin to study those people, and these are the things they do. Look at the, this, these are the results that they have. You know, so if I want to have that result, this is what I must do. This is what I need to do. You need to be able to put your past behind you. It is hard, but it is a very, very important thing, you know, for you to go on. There are so many, you know, things to be done, but 
Okay, really so can't go deep into there was all a of part that. where you got married. Yes, I did and get married. Likely there were issues. Yes. How did you feel about you not telling people or talking about it easily when you know it's the issues that are coming up in your marriage, okay. knowing that you were the matchmaker, you were yes. the one who had the secrets. Yes. You were the one who knew how to tell people, do it this way, you get yes. it right. Don't talk to her this way, you get it right. And yes. then your own marriage was now failing. Yes. How did that feel? Okay. Um, firstly, before I got married, I, act, I had started talking about all of these things. You know, imagine if I had not, and then I got married, and I woke my husband up middle of the night one day, I say, babe, you see, I want to go and start talking about 14 heartbreaks and 15 abortions. Which man, he will he not say, are you all right? So I had started talking about that before I met him, you know, so, and he was okay with that, and we got married. But remember what I said when I said, if you read my book, How the Matchmaker's Marriage Failed, I talked about it. I married to prove Daddy wrong. Do you understand? So there's already a foundational issue in that marriage. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because of all my past dysfunction, my childhood dysfunction and all of that. So that marriage was already built on a wrong foundation. Do you get? When, that's why when people say they have marital issues, I like to say, don't go and see a marriage counselor, see a therapist. Because a therapist goes back to your past. You know, they will now explain to you why. You know what they say in marriage counseling? Uh, maybe your husband like to eat okra. You, you like to eat the way you do. Stop, hey, then you start cooking okra, uh, okra now. He's the head. But they don't know that maybe okra, you know, is a problem to you in your past. When you were growing up, if you see okra like this, you start having rashes. I'm telling you, these yes. issues are that deep. But people don't know. They just, you know, they treat the symptoms if instead of the root of the matter. So my, mar my marriage was... A foundational issue it was a root issue so everything went wrong because it was a foundational issue so you know it well I wouldn't I wanted to say that maybe it didn't matter who I married and which is the truth I think that you're not correct. yet at that point where you have totally healed exactly and now you've also realized that because you made this mistake you're helping other people as yes. well yes. go through healing and all through your healing boot camp yes okay so yes. there's so much I want to ask you but unfortunately we've run out of time yes how can people contact you on social media for those who want to you know just ask questions further questions questions we're not able to discuss here yes. those who have who are currently going through what you have been through yes and people like private, you know, uh, uh, meetings and sessions, and I do all of that too. Just follow me everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere at Lara Kudaisi. Lara Kudaisi. Slide into my DM, tweet at me everywhere. I'm always, you know, available 247. All right. You thank know, you so much for joining us, thank Lara. You and thank you for me. sharing your story, regardless of what your pain is. I'm hoping that Lara, having shared her journey, the challenges she's encountered along the way, and the lessons that she has learned, that you'll be able to realize that you're not alone in your pain and that your pain should not go to waste. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.